Hey guys, Hu Shang here. Today we're going to be looking at an absolute banger of a build order. It's uh, giving me 70 to 80% win rate in the TVP matchup. Let's check it out. Alright, so first thing you're going to do is change your rally point to the ramp. This is going to be your 14 depot. After that, you're going to grab your barracks on 16 supply. And then after the barracks, also on 16, you're going to grab your gas geyser. Right after the gas geyser, you're going to change your rally point from the command center to your opponent's base. This is going to be your scouting SCV. When your gas completes, you're going to grab two SCVs and place them inside. Next, when your barracks is complete, you're going to start one marine and you're going to create an orbital command. Around this time, your SCV should arrive at the Protoss' base. You're going to want to pay attention to the gas count and whether or not the Protoss has a gateway and cyber core at home. You're also going to want to check out whether they've expanded or not. A normal Protoss expansion is around 1 minute and 40 seconds. If you don't see an expansion or you see double gas, you're going to want to deviate from the build order and pick something that's a bit more safe against all ins. However, Command if you spot complete. one gate complete. and an expansion and one gas, you can continue. While you're scouting, you're going to want to make your command center at 20 supply. After that, you're going to start your reactor when your marine finishes. And following the marine, you're going to want to make a depot on 21 supply. Before that, just make sure to make your SCV and drop your meal. And then we make our depot. And for the advanced version, you're going to want to pull your guys off of gas. You can see here that I have 16 on minerals and 0 on gas, soon to be 1. You don't have to do this. It's definitely a high level optimization. But if you want the build order to flow especially smoothly, make sure to pull your guys off gas after the second depot. Next, we're going to grab our barracks. If you want, you can grab one barracks at a time and get the first or the uh, the second barracks slightly earlier. But what I'm going to do here is just grab both of them at pretty much the same time. And this way, it makes the build quite a bit easier. You're not doing as many actions. Next, we're going to start up two Marines from our reactor barracks. That's going to take us up to three Marines. And this is going to be an especially key timing you're going to want to pay attention to. Okay, so our two Marines have just finished up, giving us a total of three. And this is a very important timing. It's about 2.45 in game. And this is important because this is when the Adept shows up. So you're going to want to pay a little bit more attention to the front of your base. So that you can either try and catch the Adept or just make sure that you're not going to get any of your Marines picked off. Okay, while you're dealing with that, there's going to be a couple things you need to manage. So as you can see, the barracks are still quite far away from finishing, so we don't need to worry about those while we're dealing with the Adept. But we do need to keep uh, queuing SCVs, and we do need to keep queuing Marines. On top of that, we also need to get an Orbital Command. So while you're watching these Marines, you can queue up SCVs, you can create your Orbital Command in the same screen, and you can queue up Marines. Okay, here I have an example game we're just going to take a quick look at. So you can see I have uh, four Marines here. It's a slightly greedier version of the build order, but you can see me looking around for the Adept, hoping to maybe catch it coming in. And he doesn't send it out right away. Sometimes this will happen if they're looking for your Reaper or something like that, which was the case here. Um, but I'm going to move out with the six Marines instead. And because of that, we're going to catch his Adept. Usually Protest players are trying to multitask at this point, right? Like they're trying not to watch the Adept because they're trying to get their Twilight Council and their Gateway and stuff. And so, you know, if you if you kind of catch them in a weird position where they're not expecting your Marines and you can often uh, take it down. Okay, here we have an example of a pretty typical Adept Marine interaction. So you can see the three Marine kind of pop out as the Adepts arrive. And usually if Protest is playing correctly, they're going to just try and shade past you, see what your buildings are up to. And you're just going to have to raise your wall, and then when they cancel, you can lower it. 
Um, and if you want to be a little bit cheeky, you can kind of try and come out here a little bit. And if the Protoss is not super paying attention, you can sometimes catch him. Actually, I think I might have been able to kill this Adept if I was a little bit more on point. Um, but you don't want to just sit back here because if you sit back, the Protoss can just shade in all day. And if they commit like this, not a big deal. Actually, this was a nice little play. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, but we're going to trap this Adept, kill it with the first couple Marines, and uh, you're good to go. There's our orbital command. These marines are getting low. We're going to queue those up again. And now we're going to be waiting for these two barracks to finish. We're going to go for two tech labs. One little tip for you guys to smooth out things from earlier is when you make these two barracks, you can hold shift and right click on the natural mineral line so that when they complete, they come to the second base rather than the first base. So when our barracks complete, we're going to start two tech labs. And immediately after starting the two tech labs, you're going to create a depot at your natural. Command center upgrade. I find it helpful to make this uh, part of the wall because later on, you're going to want some sort of protection against Dark Templar. This is going to make things a lot easier. After that, we're going to start stim. We're going to start concussive shell. We're using concussive shell because we want that to be finished when we move out. And if you go combat shield first, it's not going to be done in time. So stim, concussive shell, we will research combat shields later. Also, you're going to start up your second gas. At the same time as that, you're going to start up two marauders and two marines. This is about four minutes game time. As soon as these marauders finish, we're going to execute our attack. And while we're waiting for them, we're going to start up an eBay we're going to continue our depot production. Research. Here are the two Marauders. Don't forget to start Combat Shield as your Concussive Shell finishes. After these two Marauders, I'm continuing to make Marines. So there's only two Marauders in this build. I'm also going to place another depot over here. Some maps you won't have enough depots to do this, but this is going to be especially helpful for spotting for Dark Templars from a War Prism. And then at 430, you're going to start a factory. And after that, you're going to grab a third command center. You can place this on the low ground if you like, but placing on the high ground is quite a bit safer. Again, we're still continuing marine production. And if you take a look at my natural, I still haven't taken my gases. It's quite late. So the reason here is we're going to have a lot of mineral stuff and we're not really making too many gas uh, units. The only thing we're going to be making are some medevacs, but those are still quite far away. So no need to be mining a lot of gas. Instead, we need to make sure our depots are on point and we're still making units. All right. So now that you guys know the opening, we're going to be looking at a couple of example replays. In this game, I'm doing a slightly different three racks opener. I went for plus one attack instead of uh, an early combat shield and concussive. But they're, they're very similar in terms of what you're trying to accomplish with a push. So we come in here. My opponent opened up Oracle. Um, so I'm kind of looking for a stasis ward here. And and so I'm going to rotate. I, I don't want to let him uh, kite my marines too easily with a stalker. So you got to be a little bit careful because if you're not using stim, the stalker can kill your marines forever. But then if you use the stim, you got to make sure you're going to take down quite a few of them because you're going to lose a lot of health to do that. So I rotate here, snipe the Nexus. I think it was a good play. And then you saw there I was able to get like right on top of the Stalker um, and kill a couple. But um, <laughs> a little too focused on the Stalkers. Did not see the Stasis. So I'm trying to make the most of it. But um, I think he ends up defending here. It's not too bad. Um, and he is going to be able to kill quite a few of these marines. So, could have been better. But we did get a little bit of damage. We canceled the Nexus and uh, we killed a couple of Stalkers. So, not too bad of an early game at all. And now we've got the third base up. We've got our production going. And if I pause the game right here, despite things going kind of evenly, if you look at the worker count, you can actually tell that I've gained a pretty significant lead from that. Um, 
probably mostly due to mistakes on his end. But yeah, pretty solid early game. Let's check out another replay. Okay, here we have another example game. Um, I'm pushing out a little bit later here. I opened up with a couple of Marauders. So this push hits um, after the other one. But we did get a little bit of damage early on. I just skipped that. It was not uh, It was kind of negligible. Um, so we're coming in here, and he's opened up with a very defensive Colossus build. Um, however, he's kind of sacrificing his workers. So really quick, really quick Colossus, but no third base. If you look at the worker count here, you can see that I'm up two. And normally, Pura should be up like six. So not too bad for us. I'm just kind of poking around, trying to see if he's going to maybe all in me or what he's up to. But he eventually takes that Nexus. And what I'm hoping to do now is kind of sneak past him and go kill like 40 SCVs. <laughs> A man can dream, you know? And since he has these super fast Colossus, I kind of know that he doesn't have an Observer over here. I'm kind of looking for one as well. And just kind of waiting for him to be in the wrong position. So you'll see me kill this uh, probe in a second. And then I'm trying to like scan and see if there's any opening. And if there's not, I'll just keep making uh, bio, right? Like back at home, we got all our production set up. We're making Marauders, Widow Mines and stuff. Um, but finally, he gets a little bit lazy. And now we know he's not in the position. So I'm going to go for... Um, a push here he realizes um, I do get to kill a Colossus which is pretty nice and I'm trying to kill some uh, Zealot it would have been better actually if I just kind of ran right away for the worker but this game didn't work out quite as well as the last game the thing is though for some reason, these Protest players are just getting super caught up when I do this aggression. You can see here, I'm at 66 workers to 48. So if we don't, you know, lose the game in the next two minutes, the game is basically over. Um, and he plays pretty defensive here, so so that, that does occur. Um, let's check out another game. I don't think the uh, late games are too relevant. So here we have a pretty high level match. It's between uh, Uthermal and Foryumi. Maybe some of you hadn't heard of Foryumi, but recently he got top 16, I believe, on EU. So really solid up and comer. We can see here a little bit of a battle uh, with the Adept and the Marines. Um, and Foryumi, obviously a super strong Protoss. So you can see how this is different already compared to the games I already showed. Foryumi trying to be extra annoying here <laughs> just shading continuously into the base but not really ever committing so we have Uthermo moving out here um, he decided to make four Marauder by the way he went uh, two more Marauder than I do and for Yumi he's playing Oracle so similar situation got to be careful of those stasis wards um, and he for Yumi also has a shield battery over here so you got to be very tactical with how you move here. One thing you're really trying to do is not come from this angle over here. You really want to control this space in the center because by doing that, you force the Protoss to pick which shield butter they want to try and stay by. So, Uthermal kind of forced him into the natural. That's going to allow him to pounce on this third, bait for Yumi out of position, and then just jump on him with a stim. No shield battery overcharge, and um, this is actually game right away. So, very, very powerful build order. Hope you guys liked this guide. Thought that was a fun game to end on. And I guess before I go, if you guys want to support me, obviously these videos are all free. These guides are all free. There's a bunch more on the channel if you want to check them out. If you guys want to support me, you can check out my Twitch channel, subscribe there. We also have uh, YouTube memberships. And in the YouTube memberships, we're uh, doing some group practice. I also have a couple guys, actually quite a few guys lately, in the uh, extreme YouTube membership where I'm doing unlimited replay analysis. So if you're really interested in taking your game to the next level, check it out. Um, and apart from that, I also offer coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching. So check out my website. It's hushangcoaching.com. 
And with that, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one.